Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 122 of Gaston's Great. As we have said many times, it's a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Steve Maloney. We're coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia. We're going to shift gears again as we've done um, it's three other episodes and kind of ha- continue our discussion on leadership and um, for those of you who are disappointed in not having um, a, a nonprofit or organization on, well, stay tuned till next week. <laughs> this might be a, this is what we call our filler episodes, uh, but we are big and love talking about leadership here at GSM. We were discussing a book and three other episodes. If you want to go back, you can find them. Sorry, I don't have the episode numbers in front of me, but we're talking about a great book that we have studied here at GSM called uh, Way of the Shepherd. And if you're listening to hearing this for the first time, it's going to remind you that we have uh, Mark Benton joining us here today, who is our operations manager in our, our residential uh, group here at GSM. But he has a, a great backstory and um, history of, of tremendous leadership, both before his time here at GSM and also um, here at, since he's been a member, a team member of here at GSM. Again, he's running a group that, frankly, I consider to be the best, the best, most best led group here at, at, at GSM services. But we're going to go back a little bit to, to again, as I said, if you haven't heard this before, there's seven principles in the way of the shepherd that discuss leadership, leading teams specifically. And let's review those, the first three, because we're going to talk about principle number four today. But again, when we talk about way of the shepherd, we're using it in a reference of literally a shepherd leading their flock of, of sheep. So, um, but we, we're going to apply that to teams and, and, and people as well. But that first principle was know the condition of your flock. The second principle was to discover the shape of your sheep, so knowing what condition they're in. And number three was help your sheep identify with you. So I would encourage you, if you haven't heard the other episodes uh, as we move on, before we move on here, I would encourage you maybe even pause this one and go back and listen to the other three episodes and then come back to this one. But... Principle number four, I'm just going to go ahead and share it, and then we'll get into a little bit of a detailed discussion about that. But, but excuse me, principle number four is make your pasture a safe place. So, of course, you can translate that into make your company, make your office, make your team, make your whatever area it is you're working in, church, whatever you might be involved with, you're leading your family, for your kids, just Anything and everything that you might be involved with or you might find yourself in a leadership position. And we're talking about a safe place, and maybe for the 2024 in us, we're not using the phrase safe space. That's for a, that's a different discussion that yeah, we're probably not going to get into. Thing. Yeah. yeah, but um, there's a lot that goes into this. So give you some quick background on specific on the book, and then I'll throw some questions um, at Mark. But if you remember... This is a story about a student in graduate school, and he is getting ready to graduate, and he's asking for advice from one of his professors because he's gotten a job at um, this uh, company, and he's going to be leading a team. He feels comfortable about the technical side of of what he's going to be doing, but the leading team part, so he's asked uh, Dr. Newman for advice uh, over a period of time right before graduation on how to do that. So... On this one, make your pasture a safe place. Dr. Newman takes the uh, student to um, a field basically full of, for lack of a better description, emaciated sheep. They're matted. They're gnarly. they uh, got gnarly wool. It's brown grass or no grass in the pasture. And if you take a closer look, you can see flies swarming around the heads and eyes of the flock. Um, you got sores infested with bugs. I mean, it's just not a good sight. So... Literally, he's showing him an example of a pasture that is not a safe place for those sheep. So they're basically, they're being neglected. So um, how do you, how do you convert that? So I, sometimes I, I guess that is a good place to start. Leadership is to show you what a safe place isn't, right? So sometimes, you know, that, that's helpful to know the difference, right, between a, a, a good a good safe place and something that's not a a safe place but the same thing can happen to teams and workplaces or again like I said anything that you might be involved with so Mark uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you because Mark and I have both read this book multiple times we've kind of studied it and just 
from your perspective and from the general leadership studies that we've done, but maybe even besides just where the shepherd, but specifically here, kind of how do you how do you interpret that? What do you what do you take from that principle number four? Make your pasture or workplace, and in, in our case, a, a safe place. Yeah, I, I think um, for me, it's what do we say all the time, right? Is how do you know it's bad? Um, but if you've lived with bad and you've seen bad leadership and you've been that emaciated sheep and you've been that sheep that has sores and cuts on him, you know when you get into a safe spot. You know, when right. all of a sudden, and so it's almost like, um, you know, I've always said I almost like the broken things. <laughs> you know, um, I don't really, I enjoy fixing the broken things. That's why I'm a technician, right? But I also like to see someone that's been in that shape and being able to bring them into a place of safety and a place of appreciation and a place of healing that um, all of a sudden they realize, hey, okay, this is a this is a good place to be. So how would you describe that? So, I mean, there's a lot of things that he touches on in the book and through that process, but how, how would you describe? What are the, some of the things that the, the author kind of uses to describe a safe place? How do you know? I mean, what, what, you know, what are the five or six things maybe that, um, that if you were outside looking in, you can say, oh yeah, you know, this team, this workplace, this pasture, so to speak, is a safe place. Um, I think I go back to Simon Sinek. Uh, Simon Sinek said the explain the why, the okay. why first. And I think that um, a lot of times you're told to go do something and you're never given the why. So therefore the buy-in isn't there of understanding how does that improve my situation? How does that improve my customer situation? So one of the first things I try to stand on is the, like one of the pillars I try to stand on is explaining the why, you know, and I think you actually get grace from your people when you've done that consistently, that there are times in a fast situation that I'm like, go do it. I'll give you the why later. And they automatically <laughs> trust and go, Mark said to go do it. He'll give me the why later. Boom. And they go and do it with no question. Um, because they know I'm going to circle back and go. Because you've built that trust. You've built that safe place yes. up to that up to that point. Yes. You couldn't start that way with a new team. Is that That's fair? Right. Yeah. That's right. Then you become a dictator, right? right? You're not really leading, right? There's a difference between a dictator and a leader, right? You know, a dictator, you know, bah, 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 you're going to do it this way or I'm going to fire you. You're going to do it this way or you're not, you know. A leader is going to lead you down that road and is going to also empower you to make decisions. You know, one of the, I think a failure when I see a, a team that is frozen until the leader tells them, go do this. Right. That for me, you know, some people may uh, enjoy that. I don't know why you would as a leader, but some people may enjoy that power, right, or, or something. But for me, that's actually a... Uh, that's a deficiency in leadership. If your people are scared to move, then you haven't empowered them. You haven't given them, and by explaining that why over and over and over again, they start learning your process. They start learning the way you're thinking. They start learning that Mark's going to say it's okay. If I'm taking care of a customer or another teammate, he's going to give me the green light to do that. You know, right. you know and I think that's empowerment. And, uh, and then you've, we've talked about this a lot of keeping your people informed, right? Because if you don't tell them what's going on, they're going to they're gonna create their own narrative. Right. They're going to create their own story and say, oh, well, this is why we're doing this. And, and God, most of the time, unfortunately, that is not accurate, you know, because they've, they've built it in their mind. So being able to explain the why, and tell them why we're doing this, why we're moving this direction. You know, if we go into our loyalty club program, right, you know, telling somebody, go sell loyalty clubs, you know, go sell loyalty clubs. But if you explain to them the why that it's going to enable us to help more people, it's going to help, it's going to enable us to, you know, get our message out there farther of, of helping people and doing the right things. And plus on the backside, when it's 70 degrees outside, it's going to give us an opportunity to be out there and let you go to work right. instead of sitting at home, right? So, yeah, we, you know, and but if you didn't do that, it would be what? What would the story they would think of? You know, what what story would they think of if, if, if you just walked in there? Yeah, it's the, all about Mark or the company as opposed to what's in it for them, what's in it for the customer, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's understanding, yeah, talking about that why. So 
when you talked about the dictator, it's more they're more leading out of fear, yes, or personal um, benefit as opposed to what's best for the team um, overall. Is that a fair? Very much so. Okay. Yeah, very much so. And then, you know, for me too, it's you know every position. Um, and I, I said this before, I think, in one of the meetings in Ukraine, because I know you're a Wolfpack fan. But I said, you know, every 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 pack, the alpha is great, right? The the alpha, is, you know, everybody for whatever reason in our society, we've 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 tried to turn it to where everybody wants to be an alpha. Everybody has to be, you know, pushed. No, you don't. Or we think we gravitate toward the alpha leader. Like, yeah, you're not successful if you're not an alpha. No, that's not true. You know, everybody has a place. Everybody has importance. Everybody has value. God gave us value, right? You know, so we need to build that value with someone. You know, I may be a great technician, technically, but I may not do well when it comes to, um, you know, speaking to homeowners, right? You know, well, this other person may not be the best technician in the world, but he may have a great opportunity with homeowners and have a great reaction with homeowners. Well, you build on that strength. You know, you don't tell him, well, you don't want to be a service manager, so you must not have any ambition in your life. You know, it, it's, no. So is the, you're talking about, I mean, could you put it another way, you're talking about the leader in this case needs to be able to show the value of every yes. member of the team, every position, if it's in a company. Just, um, but but it's legit, but it's, it's got to be legit too. It's not just, it's not just, you know, chatter and talk. It's, um, understanding the value of every pro- profession and position in a company or team or whatever the case may be. Well, go with what we've talked about before, too, is find the value, right? Even even because how many of us, you know, unfortunately, man, you know, how many people don't believe they have value? Right. Through whatever. They you don't know, see for, it for, for, for some reason. Yeah, you know what I mean? For whatever reason, they don't even feel like they have value. And so they come to you. And they're broken and they think, you know, I don't have, you know, I'm just this. I, I hate that phrase. When somebody says, well, I'm just a service tech. I'm just an a installer. maintenance tech. I'm, I'm just, just a, that. And I'm God. I'm just a bank teller. I'm just a whatever. Right. Yeah. Insert, I'm just, insert job or insert position. Right. And they use that word just, right. And I'm going, somebody has not empowered them. Somebody yeah. has not said, hold your head up, man. Wash your face. Hold your head up and say, I am a mechanic. I am a bank teller. I am this, and do that with pride, you know, and and have that value, have that uh, that feeling of importance in your life. And I feel like that's part of that is part of the leadership journey. Is you've got to tell people, hey, man, you're important. Yeah. You mean something to me. You know, you're important to me. You know, um, you know. I think it was years ago. But I heard someone go, you know, well, you know, you probably don't even care. You know, you don't even care if I leave or, or stay. And I kind of went, okay, I failed this person, right? I have, as a leader, I have not shown him how valuable. And and it's weird, isn't it? Because you've done it. I've watched you do it to people. Is Isn't it weird that when you start building value with someone, how it seems like this is the first time they've heard it? Yeah, maybe. You know, and they, yeah. they, they put their head down, and they don't make eye contact with you. And they put their head down, and they – and, and, and it's like, hey, man, look at me, <laughs> you know, and when they look up at you, they, they, you can almost see that emotion in their eyes and you're going, no one's ever told you what a great human being you are. Have you? And they no, you know, and I'm like, well, that's going to change today. <laughs> you know, you are a great person, you know, um, and then unfortunately, then there's the other side of it, right, which is calling the chronic instigators from the flock. Yeah, okay, it's kind of the. Our experience, uh, I think, in 30 years here and just uh, so many things I've been involved with, there is a certain percentage of individuals who they're n- you're not going to you're not going to get them built up, right? You're not going to get them on the team, so to speak. Their their instigator is a pretty strong word, but um, that's probably a fair a fair word. I mean, so how would you, from how would you translate that from the shepherd? concept in the book to the, to, to real life? I mean, what, what do you do? How do you recognize those instigators and, and what do you do about it? Yeah, well, I think I go back to Dave Ramsey, right? I've listened to enough Dave Ramsey. I've read enough Dave Ramsey to where basically Dave Ramsey is going, hey, this is who we are. 
we want you to be here, but this behavior is not acceptable. You know, uh, we want to help you change. We want to give you the resources to, to do better. We want to give you the opportunities to do better. But if you're not willing to put the work in, if you're not willing to meet me there, I'm not going to bend my culture for you. Right. And a lot of times what you see is um, when those people see that they, they can't uh, manipulate the culture, mm-hmm. they kind of find their own way out. You know, uh, very seldom, I will say very seldom, do you have to actually go down the road and say, um, you know, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to have to let you be happy, move on somewhere else, something like that. A lot of times, if you've built a tight enough team, the team will squeeze. Yeah, the team will move them out. Yeah, the or, team, or they'll realize that they're not. Yeah, they don't line up with our values right. or they don't line up with our, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. What about, what about this one? I mean, um, I really like this one. The way he words it in the in the book is reassure the sheep by staying visible. Mm-hmm. So what is uh what what comes to mind when you hear that one? My thing is is you have to be present, right? Presence, right? Presence and presence, right? Is you have to let them know you're there with them, right? Um, I think we all remember the Bugs Bunny cartoon where the dog is up <laughs> on the hill and the the sheep are you know the down there in the pasture and the and the you know but if I guarantee you. That, is that the one when the sheep start, start disappearing? Yeah, that's the one. Down the hole, <laughs> boom, 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 look at right there and everything. You know what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, we don't know what you're talking about, do you, Naomi? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, but, you know, and I'm going, okay, so you have to be there. They have to know. And one of the things I love about my team leads, um, you know, I won't call names, but, yeah, I will. Charlie, Jay, Scott, Owen, Sean, Danny is – they are there, and if the guys have a problem, they can go out and do great work every day because they know that their support staff is right there. Their support staff is within hand's reach of them, right? And I hope that my leads feel that same security. Yeah, you can't be disconnected yeah. from yeah. their team and the people that you are leading. As in, so in the business world, like in our world, in the construction home services and commercial service world, you can't sit in your office. Oh, right? no. You can't just sit in the office with the door closed and trying to manage and point around. And, but so regardless of the team or organization, yeah, you got to get on the field with them. You got to, uh, you know, you just, you just have to be engaged with them. Um, and it, again, it, you can't be just electronically, so to speak, or digitally, especially with you know, the crazy world we live in. You can, you can communicate that way all the time, but that doesn't, I don't believe that works, you know, long term. I think you, you, yeah, being yeah, being visible doesn't mean visible on FaceTime or Zoom, right? We're talking about a much much more intimate um, interaction than that. Well, you live that for twenty. You know, I've been here twenty two years, and you've lived that for twenty two years with me. You know, I remember being in the field doing a maintenance and hearing, you know, you knock on the crawl space door and say, "Hey, man, you good?" And I would go, hey, Steve, what's going on? You know, and you would crawl right under there with me and say, hey, what we got going on? And I would be able to say, oh, this is what we've got, boom, boom, boom. Or up in an attic, I would hear you talk to the homeowner, and I'd always smile, and I'd go, you know, okay, Steven's out. You know, Steven's up here with me right now. And you get a certain level of confidence knowing that your leader is under there with you. Yeah. You know, and that's what I've told the guys before is I said, man, you know, when you're out there with those guys, watch them. They, their, their chest goes out a little bit. They're, they're not scared anymore because their leader's there and they know. So I think it's important. You've you got to stay present. What, one of the things I always did uh, as a service manager is I always wanted to be there early in the morning and I wanted to see the guys when they came in the parking right. lot because I wanted to look in their eyes. I wanted to be sure they were good. They were ready to serve. They were ready to ter- serve our customer. They were ready to do the things they needed to do that day. And if they weren't, I wanted them to know that I, I was there with them. You know, what can I do? What, is there something going on? Is there something you need to talk about? You know, um, what's the next step? And I've watched my field, I've watched my leaders do that. You know, the, the leaders that um, have taken my place really, you know, I've watched them get out there with the guys um, and spend time in the field with them. And I, I think that's hugely important. So let's touch on this last one. And this okay. is, you know, some a couple, this is the second one that's probably I'll consider getting into that difficult side of, leadership or maybe more difficult side and the other one was it's calling the instigators from the flock so this last one is don't give problems time to fester Mm -hmm. um 
this is a good one because my experience is early on in my leadership career, boy, I wanted to avoid problems like the plague. You know, I, I wanted, I didn't want to deal with them. Uh, I would just, I would hope that they would just go away, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. So yeah, just maybe comment. We'll finish this episode up shortly, but comment on that one because that's a that to me that's a big one. It's huge uh, because it, again, if you let it fester, it's you know nothing's going to good. Nothing good is going to come out of it festering out. You need to deal with it, and I, you deal with it. There's a big difference between the guy that's screaming across the floor, right? You know, you know, yelling at somebody. And one of the things that I've really pushed hard and I think we do a good job at now is we don't discuss things in meetings anymore we deal with it one-on-one yeah you know if I have a problem with quality right I'm not going to waste everybody's time for 30 minutes talking about quality when I got one person correct yes and again I think you go to that person in a place of I think a place of understanding not a not a place of anger not a place of you know anything like that you go to them in a place of understanding and say, hey, I'm going to use your phrase here, Stephen. You know, can you explain to me what happened on this job? Help me understand. Yeah, help me understand what happened on this job. Yeah. You know, that's a lot better than your quality looked like crap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, know, you know, and going down that road, it just say, hey, man, explain to me what happened. Let me under, Help me understand what happened here. And that gives an open, that's, that's, you're opening up for discussion at that point because, We've been there, right? We, you're looking at the hundred, you know, at the a hundred foot view or the thousand foot view. You think you see detail, but you don't see detail. A lot of times, if you ask that leading question and say, "Can you explain to me what happened?" or "Can you explain to me, you know, how this how this happened here?" you'll get a little bit more detail and be able to go, "Okay." And then you don't look like an idiot by jumping, you know. Then that, that yeah. way you, you know, you don't look at it. But yeah, but if it is a problem, if it is a a place that you don't think you can coach your way out of, then you got to go back up to call your crown and instigators and say, Hey, this is not who we are here. And I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. My experience just tells me, unfortunately that to your, you know, you made a great point about um, if you have a team and there's maybe one individual with an issue or a problem, the easy way out is to address the whole team as, you know, this is the kind of thing we can't do. Right. Or whatever specific you know, issue it is, I and mean, that's the easy way out as opposed to pulling, um, coaching that individual one-on-one, right? Because I've seen situations where I've done it or I've seen others do it, and the rest of the team is looking around like, what are you talking about? Well, yeah. the people that care are going to get offended. Yeah. The person that doesn't care, it's going to roll off of him like water yeah. off a duck's back. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't bother him at all. Yeah. All right, so that so that's, that's a good one. But just getting, and, deal, and just dealing with that quickly and – I'm trying to think of another example in the um, leadership world would be like if there's, as a leader, if there's something going on with two on your team member, two team members, right? One of them comes to you. The other one comes to you. Get those two people together quick. Yes. And and talk it out because the whole two people coming to you with different stories, that's another example of where back in the day I would really not want to deal with that either. But I've learned the hard way that – um Man, it, it can you can deal with that kind of thing immediately. You, you get them both together face to face, and it's amazing what you find out in those type of situations. That's a similar one, right? You, you, those kind of things fester. Oh man, with personnel, with team members. Um, I mean, we don't the real world. Everybody doesn't get along all the time, perfectly. But those interpersonal issues will will fester and, and cause some long term issues. Well, what you said too is if 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 you do something and I don't address it immediately, I'm basically telling you that's okay. Yeah. Right? And then if I continue to procrastinate and I don't because I don't want to deal with it right now, oh, it's not a good time to deal with it right now. Well, now if they've done it three or four times, it's become a habit. And then when you do address it, they look at you and go, I've been doing that for two weeks and you didn't say <laughs> anything to me. You know, and you're going, okay. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the silence can be interpreted as condoning it or it's okay or whatever. That's what if, you said. If, if the if there's some gray area on on, on the standards, right? So, so, <laughs> you know, um, we're coming up on uh, 25 minutes or so, Naomi. So, um, I got to be careful, right? Because these type of topics, you and I, 
we'll be we'll be sixty minutes in. We'll yeah. still we'll still be talking about, it. and Naomi would be like steam coming out of her ears and her headphones, like, "What in the world is going on here?" Yeah. So yeah, she'll be cutting us <laughs> off. Cutting so, us off. but listen, I'm gonna um, any any last words, Mark, before we before we cut this episode out. No, sir. Sure. Everything. All right. So you know, I normally have a book recommendation. Um, as I told Naomi right before we started recording, I was not prepared today. But luckily, I've got Naomi and Mark here to cover for me. But I'm going to go back and cheat and just remind you, listeners, once again, the book we're talking about here is Way of the Shepherd by uh, Dr. Kevin Lehman and Bill Pentak. And I would, if, if you're in any type of leadership, you have people you're trying to grow their leadership, coach them into better leaders, uh, of, especially of teams. Man, I would strongly, this is just a simple read, uh, uh, short relatively short book that I would strongly uh, recommend um, that, that you utilize. So again, um, we will continue to have these uh, episodes and, and discuss leadership when we need to, and I um, hope you enjoyed it. So as usual, to our listeners out there, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. Continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast, and please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email address, which is podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on all our social media platforms. And thanks again to Mark for his insight and being our, our guest today. We'll probably hear from him again as we continue on this leadership discussion. But never fear, we do have other episodes uh, scheduled to record uh, in the coming weeks as well with uh, with uh, others from our, our community. So Gas and Great is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great. <laughs>